issue. Number one issue. When people call the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, it's not about a tax abatement, it's not about the rail spur that they need, it's about talent. And that's if you're in state, can I stay in state and grow? Do you have the talent for that? Can I bring my business to Michigan? Do you have the talent? Talent is the new currency in economic development, and every state is competing. Take a look at this, not just every state, but every country needs talent right now. And this includes our good friend to the West, Governor Scott Walker. He's recognized that Michigan and Detroit in particular have already done an amazing job of growing STEAM talent. Now certainly it's not where we need, we need a lot more of it, but what we have, he wants to come poach. But I have more for Governor Walker later. <laughs> We'll get to you in a little bit, my friend. Now, I hope all of you have heard about the governor's Marshall Plan for Talent. I've heard a lot of great conversations about it. We're very excited about it. It is a revolutionary approach to bring business and education together in ways that they never have before to better prepare our learners for the jobs of today and tomorrow. This is not a traditional education grant. In fact, we're not even calling it an education grant. It's an innovation grant. It's based on talent consortiums. It's all about innovation, creativity, doing things very different with partners maybe you haven't been with before. That is going to be a huge deal for us. And we're very excited. Yesterday, the Senate passed it overwhelmingly, 30 to 2. Thank you, Senators. We greatly appreciate that. And we look forward to working with our friends and partners in the House next week to get this finalized so we can start getting the Marshall Plan implemented. But as part of that, we recognize that it's not just the home growing talent. It's not just our learners here in Michigan. We need to do more. We need to go out of state. We need to grow the population in the state. As most of you know, we lost about a half a million Michiganders during the recession and they did not come back. So we need to attract people to Michigan. But how are we going to do that? How are we going to get there? Well, first we started with data. You know the governor, he loves data. So you have to start there. So we did our research. We talked to a lot of young professionals and STEAM graduates from Michigan and also around the country. And we worked with Michigan State University to take a look at the retention data as well here in the state of Michigan. In order to identify ways to attract STEAM talent, we first needed to gauge people's perceptions about Michigan and their willingness to stay here or to move here. We conducted these studies in July of 2017 and we talked to college students, again, from around the country and nearby states. Here's some of the learnings from the recent STEAM graduates. Key learnings, really, from that study, and I know it's very hard to read, particularly in the back of the room, but the number one reason for moving to Michigan is gonna be a job. Ultimately, it does come down to that job. But when offered a job in Michigan, Suddenly, there were a whole host of other considerations. Quality of life, cost of living, affordable housing. We did find that graduates would consider Michigan when presented with the data. Very similar findings for young professionals. Almost identical. Maybe a little bit more concerned about cost of living, homes versus apartments, things like that. But in the end, jobs are king. It all comes down to that. But we wanted to do a little bit deeper dive to understand the mindset of millennials. Then came Project 480. Let me explain a little bit about Project 480. This was a great opportunity to bring STEAM professionals that had moved to Michigan. Not one of them was from Michigan. They all had moved here. And let me give you their mindset going into this project too. They did not want to come to Michigan. They came only because of the job. Every single one of them thought it would be very short term. They would springboard their career to a place that they wanted to live and have the, the job that they wanted. So they came here very reluctantly. And they came here with a lot of perceptions, misperceptions about the state. So let's take a look at what happened. Welcome to this wonderful Project 480. You might be wondering, what is Project 480? We have 480 minutes of your time today to solve a key challenge for the state of Michigan. 
You all are STEAM professionals who have really come to us from around the globe. All of you have chosen Michigan and we want to know why. My name is Chris. I'm from Miami. I moved to Michigan from Cleveland. From Mexico City. I was born and raised in Shanghai, China. I don't think I thought of Michigan at all before moving here. I was kind of nervous about moving to Detroit. After moving here, it was like really fast. I realized it was definitely not abandoned. The state needs great STEAM talent to keep our state vibrant. Throughout the day, we're going to try and raise awareness of Michigan. What is it really about Michigan? What can bring people in when they think about where they're choosing to live? Before I moved to Michigan, I didn't know exactly what to expect. When I got here, I was really surprised by what I found. I like the cost of living. I really love the Four Seasons. There's so much cool stuff happening here. You have a lot of industries that tap into the best and the brightest this country has to offer. Michigan has like a lot more natural beauty than I thought it did. There is a lot of uh, art in Detroit. There's something here for everyone, and I don't think people realize that until they move out here. Michigan is not the place that you've known from 10 years ago. Michigan is the best place for opportunities. Detroit is a city that's big enough to matter globally, but small enough that you matter within it. It's uh, an incredible place to live. So the good news is I think they realize Detroit's not abandoned anymore. Um, this was incredible. This was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever been a part of. I'd like to thank our partners at McCann for helping us put this on. We learned that these millennials are incredibly driven. They're incredibly passionate. They want to make an imprint. They want to leave a legacy on society, a very positive one. Uh, they don't mind being a big fish in a small pond. In fact, they like that so that they can make that imprint, leave that, that, that uh, opportunity to do something to better society. It was fantastic. The other thing that we learned through this, not just the, the 480, but all the other research too, is about a third of millennials around the country have no perception of Michigan. So not necessarily negative, like zero. There is a huge knowledge vacuum with a great percentage of these folks. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a great opportunity. We gained some very powerful insights, though. And there are some barriers. There are some very serious misperceptions. Words and phrases still resonate more than what any of you probably can imagine. Bankruptcy, dangerous, one industry state, and a cyclical industry at that, gray. The word gray was used a lot. Sorry, it's raining today. It is a little gray. But yesterday was beautiful, and tomorrow will be too. <laughs> and they have no knowledge of the jobs here in Michigan. Not just the mobility piece and all the high-tech jobs in the automotive industry and mobility. Never, never mind aerospace and finance and IT and all the high-tech jobs and healthcare and everything else here in Michigan. So it's very important for all of us to keep in mind. Do not take for granted what we know about Michigan. We live through the recession. We saw what happened. We also have lived through the comeback. We've seen all the amazing things that have happened to this state, to our vibrant communities, the comebacks, all the changes. We lived it every single day. But don't live in an echo chamber. No one else outside of Michigan really knows this. That resonated so deeply with us. And you cannot take that for granted. And that's the same for communities. Detroit still equals Michigan. So I'm just trying to be candid. I'm not trying to be offensive to all the other communities that all of us love dearly. Ann Arbor is registering just a little bit. Grand Rapids, Traverse City, Lansing, the beautiful Upper Peninsula, not on the radar. So we need to remember that, because we love and we know these things about our state. Others do not. The good news about our focus groups, of those 16, 15 of those millennials chose. They got that opportunity they were seeking to go someplace else. And 15 of the 16 chose to stay in Michigan. They fell in love, as you heard them say. Once they got here, their misperceptions were blown away. So that's good news. Look, I think this conference is highlighting something we also know. Michigan's not perfect. I get it. We still have a lot of work to do. We've come a long ways. 
but we still need to work on education and improve our educational system, better transportation, infrastructure, access to broadband, I get it. But you know what? We still have come a long way in eight years. Some amazing things have happened to us, and we need to be loud and proud and tell that very positive story. That's something that we learned from this. So we wanted to keep digging. So we worked with Michigan State University to do a STEAM talent retention study. 36% of graduates from Michigan's public universities and schools have left the state. A lot of those are engineers and in tech. I get it, 36% sounds alarmingly high. We'd all like for it to be zero. We know we'll never get there. This actually is not that bad. And we're still a net importer of STEAM talent, particularly here in the Midwest. So we do have a lot of engineers and other folks coming to the state. So this is not all bad news. But half the folks that we talked to, almost half, 41%, we wanted to find out why did they go ahead and leave Michigan. And we were shocked at the two reasons. One is they could find jobs quicker somewhere else. They were very open and candid and said Michigan companies, HR departments, were not getting back to them in a timely manner about opportunities to stay here in Michigan. And then the other piece, wages. Now, we hear a lot of times from all of you, hey, when you do promote Michigan, you need to do a really good job, highlight the, the cost of living, the incredible cost of living here, and how you can buy this house versus the broom closet in San Francisco. We found out we need to be very careful with that, very selective. There are times and places absolutely we can use that. You heard it in the 480 video. But there are still some places where the wages are so high that even with that exorbitant cost of living, for that millennial, they are still on a net positive versus if they came here. So be very careful and understand the data before we start to jump into things like that. Retention is just as important as attraction. That's the other piece we talked about with all these folks in our studies. Data suggests that just like graduates and young professionals, college students right here in Michigan need to hear more about what we have to offer the vibrant communities, the comebacks of all these places, the beautiful state. I'm going to give you another great example. I think we all recognize Sleeping Bear Dunes, nationally recognized, one of the best beaches in the world. We love it. It's an icon. Most college students in the state of Michigan have no idea what Sleeping Bear Dunes is. They've never visited it. They've never even heard of it. And when I say a lot, I mean like 90%. So again, don't take for granted what we know about the state and the icons and the things that we love, most people don't know about it. So, Ted, what's the plan? If Pure Michigan gets people to visit Michigan for two weeks, what can we do to get people to live here for 20 years? So let's take a look. Ah, uh, the elusive STEAM young professionals. Coveted by all, it's no secret this talent pool has plenty of options when it comes to choosing a place to live and build a career. But here's the thing, Michigan has some awesome careers at innovative companies that are shaping the future. And with a work-life balance that's second to none, Michigan is the best choice. We just have to let them know it with a campaign that stops them in their Instagram tracks. And that, friends, requires getting just a little bananas. Enter a new campaign to retain and attract STEAM talent to Michigan. We'll catch them on campus, in their social networks, through their headphones, pretty much everywhere they are. Because what matters to these young professionals is more than just a job that changes the future. Oh no, to them, having a life outside of it matters too. And it's all right here. Michigan, where some choices change your day, others change the future. There you have it, choose Michigan where some decisions change your day, others change the future. That came right from the millennials that we talked to of what they wanted Michigan to stand for. So we'll take a little look here. Despite millennials' drive and ambition, 
The other thing that came out of our research is work-life balance is still incredibly important to them. This is something that other markets, other cities, other states are not focusing on at all. Choose Michigan is a campaign that expresses not only the balance, but the educate the audience on what those opportunities are, the unique jobs here. As I mentioned, they don't know what kind of unique high-tech jobs are here. And they love the fact, particularly the millennials, that yes, you can dress up as a banana at the Electric Forest Festival up in the Manistee area. I've not been, but I heard it's crazy. Um, <laughs> There are a lot of things like that that really resonated with the uniqueness of Michigan for them. And to showcase that is very important. You take a look here about some of our mobile creativity. Embracing a new connected cloud-based map today. Doing these unique job opportunities that they're not associating with Michigan. And then the, the fun stuff, the play stuff. It's also about one-on-one -on -one interaction with these folks. Going out on campus taking Michigan to the campuses, to them, show them what we have to offer. We're calling it field days, showcasing what's cool and unusual and unique to Michigan, all the events and jobs here in Michigan. We're going to do prizes from 3D printers, Instagram, photo booths, made from Michigan food, and again, the job opportunities that many don't know exist in Michigan. Oh, you may say that's bananas. That's OK. I'm sure the creative took a little of you by surprise, but I got to say, McCann came up with four great campaigns based on the research. Four very unique campaigns, too, I might add. And we took these and tested the heck out of them. Four focus groups here in Michigan, as well as our target markets. And I will tell you, this campaign it was unanimous. The colors, the juxtaposition, the uniqueness of the events and the jobs in Michigan. I'm really psyched about what we learned. And we tested it, like I said, to a great degree. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. Primary target, college students and recent graduates. Fewer barriers to relocation for them. Many of them have already moved to attend school. Gen Z is more open to relocating and new experiences, particularly in urban areas. But I don't want to discount a secondary market, the young professionals too. They may already be on a career, tra career track, but perhaps not as deeply as established and would be open to moving. So that's who, where. Again, we did some great research, and we're going to launch our pilots in three cities, Pittsburgh, Chicago, and Madison. <laughs> so to make it into the pilot, you had to meet three of the five criteria that we set. You had to be a top 25 STEAM university in your city, have one, excuse me, in your city, within a day's drive, 600 miles, comparable climate conditions, similar cultural, historic, socioeconomic attitudes and attributes, existing level of familiarity with Michigan. And these three rose to the top. I will say there is a very close fourth, came in within a whisker, and I will tell you that we are looking at Boston. It's a goal market for us. If we launch and the pilots go well, I would anticipate that we would start to go into Boston. In fact, we're already doing a perception study there, just like we did in these other markets, to see what STEAM professionals and college students think of Michigan. So that's where we will be going. How will we be going? Channel strategy based on digital, mobile, paid search, online video. I have to stress to everyone in this room, video is huge. It, it actually almost dwarfs all the other social media. Our target audience watches video about where they want to move, about the cities, the states, the jobs themselves. They certainly have watched about Michigan and Detroit while considering their job opportunities. We're going to talk about a landing page here in a little bit, but we're certainly going to look at that. The social media, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, utilize those assets to tell the opportunities and the quality of life story that Michigan has. With whom are we going to partner? That's the great thing. Choose Michigan is all about partnerships. Yes, it's going to start with the state. We will have the landing page that we talked about. We are going to be doing the advertising in these communities. But it's really about partnerships with other communities. Because if it starts with us, the end of the day, and I mentioned jobs earlier, jobs are king, it's going to come down to those jobs in the communities around the state. So we want to work with cities to share best practices for talent attraction. And I have to give a huge shout out to Grand Rapids. 
and I don't know if anyone from Grand Rapids and West Michigan is here, but they have done a fantastic job with Hello West Michigan for a long time. There is a lot that we can learn from them. Challenges, opportunities, they've been doing this for a while. The Detroit Chamber, through its Detroit Drives Degree campaign, is also looking to mirror what West Michigan has done. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But also the employers are a partner in this. We need to work with all of our employers around the state, get them materials to help them with their recruiting efforts. What are some more tools in their toolbox that we can provide? How can we feature their hot jobs and drive traffic to their company careers, excuse me, career sites? What's interesting is we were doing this research. We stumbled into a meeting with the Detroit Chamber and found out that they were doing almost identical work. Ironically, they found out almost identical results of, of their research. They were working with a huge collaboration of partners, including businesses, nonprofit, young professional networks, and county governments. They created, just like West Michigan has done, an 11 county platform focused on talent retention. Very similar to what you see, like I said, in West Michigan, the Detroit Chamber is going to launch a website that we will connect to. One very important piece that Detroit's research as well as ours showed that will be different than maybe what has been done, though, Sherpas. When we talked to millennials and all these focus groups, millennials really wanted peer-to-peer -peer interaction, guidance that they trusted. Uh, many of them actually called them Sherpas. Who can I communicate with that's already there that can tell me about the jobs, the communities, the traffic, the arts, the culture, where to live, cost of living, you name it. Whatever it is, they didn't want to hear from us. They didn't want to hear that in the campaign. They loved the awareness that we were driving, but they wanted the details from their peers. So a Sherpa campaign is going to be very important. So we've entered into an official partnership with the Detroit Chamber so that any community in Michigan that would like to participate in Choose Michigan can use their wireframe, the Sherpa, con Sherpa concept that we're developing, the texting platform that goes with the communication with the Sherpas, get technical assistance and share best practices, and be linked as part of the Choose Michigan campaign. If you already have a site and you just want to be linked, absolutely you can do that, no problem. So we're going to drive people to choose Michigan for awareness and consideration of Michigan. But we're going to connect users to websites like what Detroit Chamber is launching and what West Michigan, Hello West Michigan already has. Any community in the state of Michigan that is interested can be a part of this campaign. It's important to recognize we at the state are not the subject matter experts for every community in Michigan. We don't pretend to be. We never will be. That's why it's important to engage communities who can answer these questions about child care, housing, arts, culture, you name it. Let the experts close the deal. Our role is awareness and consideration. It's up to the communities and the employers to drive the intent. This rollout is official as of now, but the actual launch will be in August. So between now and then, we're going to be working with all the communities around the state, obviously with Detroit, Grand Rapids, Ann Arbor, many others who would like to join this campaign and work with us to launch in August. So I would love to take any questions right now. And then if you have any, uh, you want more information and contact us about joining the Choose Michigan campaign, Sammy Lukaskevitz's information is up there. She most certainly can help you with that. But would love the opportunity to answer any questions right now, because we're very excited about this. I believe it's probably the state's first talent attraction campaign. Well, right. maybe, maybe I missed it. What's the name of the campaign? Choose Michigan. Choose Michigan. And that's your website. That's not the chamber's website. That is correct. So we will, we will have a state website, the landing page, and then we will link out to all the other communities. Yes. Uh, the total, what we're doing with the research that we've already done, uh, and then all the, the, the campaign itself in those markets will be about $5 million. We've had that, yeah. Yeah, and we have, uh, as part of the Marshall Plan, there will be a continuation of the pilot through it's the fiscal year end, September 30th, 2020. I'm, I'm sorry, say it again, please, that, that last part. Oh, so as part of the Marshall Plan, then there is additional funding to keep the campaign going now that we've done the research and, and uh, the launch. 
So that, yeah, through the end of the state fiscal year 2020. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be looking at a whole host of metrics. Um, we'll do the perception studies. We're obviously going to be looking at web traffic, the peer-to-peer -peer interactions. We want to see how many of those. And then honestly, I mean, two huge factors we want to look at is are we closing the talent gap? Are we filling jobs? And population, is the state growing? So those are the metrics that we'll look at. I'm very confident we'll be successful. And uh, I would think that the next governor and, and legislators would, would welcome the opportunity to keep this going. Hi, good morning. I just wondered, have you reached out to any of the HR departments in Detroit um, and even to some of the various municipalities based on your data? We have not. I know the Detroit Chamber has um, the 11 county uh, consortium that they have built as, as part of their program that we'll be partnering with. They have, we have not. No, our research was mainly focused on the millennials themselves. And now that we have that data, we'll be going out to the communities to share that and talk about ways to partner. And then again, with, with folks that have already been doing this, like Hello West Michigan, love to hear from them of some of the challenges and opportunities that they've had as we build this out. Yes, here's a question, I think, through the bright lights. Thank you. So you talked a lot about connecting with cities and things like that throughout Michigan, but um, are there any particular considerations that you'd have to consider for professionals in rural areas? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, are you talking about rural areas in Michigan? Yeah, we have not really addressed that. I mean, I'll be very honest with you, because most of the, most of the research that we've been finding is about the vibrant urban, that, that's what millennials are interested in. Now, with that said, the other thing that we're finding is when we do give them data about and information about other parts of the state, um, the Upper Peninsula, Marquette, Traverse City, um, I, I don't want to leave anyone out, but I'm, I can't name every city, um, their interest has peaked, most certainly. But again, the awareness level outside of the state of Michigan's other cities beyond Detroit is very, very small. And so it's going to take a lot of heavy lifting, uh, one, to just get them to be interested in Michigan, but then start to learn more about it. That's certainly going to be a process. And that's one of the reasons why we chose uh, the criteria on choosing the cities you know, we want it to be similar climate, similar socioeconomic, have some of those same attributes we have, so at least those changes aren't as dramatic as, it's why we didn't choose, say, Atlanta, Austin, and San Francisco to start with. Doesn't mean that we won't someday eventually go into those markets, but we want to start where we have at least some similar DNA, if you will. Okay, so um, mine is a continuation of the rural, because I'm from the Upper Peninsula. Um, we, are just, we are just rolling out a similar campaign in the Kiwana, and I just want to make sure that we can connect with that as well. Absolutely. Think, um, so we, how would we connect with you? you with Sammy. Me? Okay, very good. <laughs> She's right here. Raise your hand, Sammy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, this will be very easy and seamless, um, and we do want every community, every region, urban, rural, involved. And we don't want to be, again, the, the, uh, the content experts on your specific areas, regions, or cities. We just want to, we want to do the heavy lifting in these other markets and develop some of these platforms and social and uh, digital and the video piece is going to be very, very important. The on-campus activation, the field days, we will do that and hope that we bear a lot of fruit of people going to the landing page. Our website, it's not gonna be massive pages. I'll tell you that right now. One, maybe two, three at the most, and then it's linked right out to all the communities because that's what it's about. It's about all of you and the jobs in those communities. I love the Upper Peninsula, by the way. Anything else? All right, what did everyone think of the campaign? Oh, got one more back there. 
This is a great campaign. I was wondering if you're familiar with the Donor 313 initiative that's going to take place uh, 313 of 2019, a big campaign where there's going to be billboards to try to entice uh, people to come back to Michigan. I'm not sure if you're familiar, Roger, with that. I am not, no. Okay, oh, we could talk later. Yeah, we'll have to I connect that, on that. Right, okay. And that, that is, you bring up a good point though. That's one of the things that we do want to utilize the one or two pages that we have, the landing page, if you will, to really start to talk about some of those unique experiences um, like Electric Daisy, Electric Daisy, Electric Forest Festival, uh, and some of the other amazing places, restaurants, activities in the state, as well as the jobs, to really focus and highlight those on our landing page uh, for folks interested. So, and then out to the communities. As part of your campaign, are you gonna reach out to uh, TV programs and uh, video game makers to try to help with some of the images that we get? Because Detroit usually takes the brunt of the criticism. Yeah, you know, that is one of the things that we actually did is we started Googling, move to Michigan. And some of the images and videos that came up were, were not flattering at all. And we did other states, and they were very different. So yes, the online content and the paid search, um, the videos, the photos, all those things are going to be very interesting to us. We've not specifically laid out a plan to target from a media relations standpoint specific shows. Um, but I do think there will be a media, uh, an earned media element to this um, beyond the interviews I do later today. Um, but I do think that there'll be a lot of opportunities to do things like that as we go forward, absolutely. It, it, it is a really, again, I can't stress, I'm very optimistic, don't get me wrong, but I can't stress enough that the, the echo chamber that we live in here in Michigan, and we're so incredibly proud, but as the governor says, we're Midwestern, we're very humble, and we don't tell our story, and we cannot take for granted that outside our state boundaries, people don't know how amazing the last few years have been. And as the governor says, we were the comeback state, but now we're back. Um, so we've got to be very loud and proud and tell that story everywhere we can. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, question for you. I know that as you're rolling this out, you got something in the back of your mind that says, hey, if this program is wildly successful, we're going to see X. Can you tell us what X looks like? 811,000 jobs filled by 2024. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I know this campaign's not gonna do that. It, this, is a, this is a stew. We're making a very complicated soup here. The Marshall Plan, uh, all of our talent efforts, uh, reforming and looking at education and training for all of our learners differently in the state. So there's the, there's the home growing pipeline piece, if you will. There's the retention. 36% of the graduates, how many of those folks can we get to stay here in Michigan? There's the attraction of, hey, come to the state, or come back if you're a Michigander who's left, and maybe left during the recession. You're one of those nearly half a million people. So we, there's a lot of heavy lifting that needs to take place here. It's uh, a three-legged stool. I hate to use that cliche, but it, there certainly is more than just one item that we need to focus on. And again, those metrics, we're going to be looking at some of the low-hanging fruit. Are, how much traffic are we driving to the website and then out to the communities? Uh, we're actually wanting, we're going to measure the peer-to-peer -peer interaction. How many interactions are we having? Because that's a really unique aspect of this campaign, that, that ambassador, Sherpa piece. Uh, but it, it, it really, the, it's going to come down the bottom line to are we filling jobs and are we getting people to move to Michigan? And so those are the two biggest factors we're going to be looking at. And perceptions, too. We, we will redo that perception survey. Good morning. Good morning. On the website, when you get all the employers engaged with it, will you also be highlighting internships so that the college students have an ex work experience here before they go to look for their final career? Yeah, and, that, and that'll be, again, a partnership. That's very mutual. Um, we can feature events, employers, internships, jobs, whatever, on our landing page. But then as you go out to our partners, the community and the employers, 
it's going to, they're the content experts on those, and they're going to have to utilize um, their assets to sell. We, we just want to provide some more tools in the toolbox, um, and there will be that highlighting feature on, on the home page, but it, we need to make for sure that uh, employers are highlighting those apprenticeship opportunities, internship, co-op, whatever it may be. And we'll, we plan to do that too when we go do the field days. Because again, a lot of, one of the biggest things we learned is it's not just the attributes of the state, it's the job opportunities within the state um, that is kind of blowing. When we tell them exactly what it is, the millennials, it kind of blows their mind that these jobs exist in Michigan. So when we're one-on-one -on -one with them at these field days, that's going to be really important as well. And we'd love to have employers go with us on, on those days and have that opportunity to talk directly to them about internships that exist in these careers that they don't know about either. Well, that's more than I thought I would get. So that's impressive. <laughs> that's good. Any last ones before we wrap up? Scott, you always have questions. Why are you not asking anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you again for showing up early this morning. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I hope you love the campaign. It is very unique. It is not Pure Michigan. It is not meant to be Pure Michigan. Pure Michigan continues to do an amazing job helping get tourists here. But we want to focus on getting those folks to come here and live for 20 years. And I think uh, in conjunction with one another, these are going to be two fantastic campaigns for the state of Michigan that will deliver some amazing results.